at and balance a chemical reaction, it is time to classify them. Uh, this is a introductory chemistry level, so I'm not going to go into things like precipitates, um, redox, or anything like that, electrolysis reactions. I'm going to stick to the very simple uh, single replacement, double replacement, synthesis, decomposition, and combustion. So, five basic types that I just listed. Not every reaction that we do is going to fall into one of these categories, but for the most part they all will. And if you take a higher level chemistry course, then you will um, learn some of the more specific types of chemical reactions, but this is a good introduction. So what you should be able to do by the time you're done with this is categorize a reaction into one of these five types. And let me get a pen here so I can write on my notes. Y'all know how I like to do that. Um, categorize a reaction by its reactants alone and then um, start to be able to predict the products. You might not be real good about this part yet, but you should definitely be able to just look at um, a reaction's reactants and be able to tell me what kind of reaction it is. <coughs> So the first kind of reaction that we're going to talk about is a synthesis reaction. This is sometimes called a composition reaction, but more often than not it's called a synthesis reaction. Oh, ha, look at that, got ahead of myself. Uh, the way that you can recognize this one is that you will have more than one reactant. It can be either an element or a compound, and when you look at them, as far as we're concerned at this level, they will be elements. So if you have an element plus an element, then um, if you have element plus element yields something, then that is your cue that this is a synthesis reaction. The biggest kicker about this one is there will only be one product and it will be a compound. You cannot have an element as a product in a synthesis reaction because you're having multiple things being put together. And so this is the skeleton um, for a synthesis reaction. You have some cation or some element that will lose electrons plus some element that will gain electrons giving you some kind of a compound. Um, and like I said, at this level, we're just going to do element plus element yields compound. At higher levels, you will be expected to know, you know, that you have, if you have two compounds, that it's going to make one compound and not be, you know, another type of reaction. Um, and this is a cute little picture. You have a little bitty skinny bird and a worm, and the bird eats the worm, and he gets to be a fat bird. So you put these two things together, and you get this. And yes, I realize the worm is bigger than the bird, but, you know, go with it. It's... It's a really goofy picture that I found on the internet. So if these are just some examples of synthesis reactions um, showing compound or element plus element yielding a compound. And one question that I get asked a lot is why do I always write sulfur as S8? Well, sulfur in its pure state is actually eight sulfur atoms bonded together in this really wicked looking ring shape. Um, you know, the same way that like oxygen and the chlorine and the Brinkelhoff twins, they're all um, doubles, they're all diatomic ma um, molecules. Sulfur has eight. So these are just some examples of synthesis reactions. And the next kind of reaction that we're going to talk about is the opposite of a synthesis reaction, also known as a decomposition. Typically a decomposition reaction is going to require some kind of an input of energy because that bond, um, it's going to take the amount of energy that was released when the bond is formed, that energy has to be absorbed in order to break that bond. Uh, easiest way to react or to recognize this one, I think decompositions are the easiest to recognize, is that they only have one compound as reactant. There's no multiple of anything, it's just one compound. And so you would have compound and then an arrow. And products, more than one, could be, you know, three, four, however many things this sucker breaks apart into. At this level, again, I will only expect you to um, know binary compound decomposition and very simple uh, ternary compound decomposition. And I'll give you all the examples of ones that I expect you to know. So here's the skeleton for decomposition. You have a compound, and it breaks apart into... Um, the element that was the one that had lost electrons and the element that was the one that had gained electrons. And here's a picture here, a um, little cartoon of decomposition. You have an egg and in there somewhere is a turtle and he's probably like looking out at you right there. And then the egg hatches and you get a busted apart egg and the now full-grown turtle. 
So examples of decomposition, you can have uh, the decomposition of water, which is one that we will do in class. Um, calcium carbonate is one of the ternary decompositions that I will actually expect you to know, uh, mostly because it produces CO2 and that's, that's an important little gas right there. Calcium hydroxide and uh, carbonic acid. This one's a good one too. Um, this one, carbonic acid doesn't actually exist very long because it very quickly decomposes into carbon dioxide and water. And if you look at um, a, a can of soda uh, and look at its ingredients list, you, sometimes, they don't so much do it anymore, sometimes they list a first ingredient as carbonated water, sometimes they actually do list it as carbonic acid because the carbonic acid almost instantly decomposes into this and gives you a nice fizzy soda. Yum. Single replacement. This is um, a reaction where an, an element replaces a similar element in a compound. When you see the skeleton, I'll explain this a little bit better. Really easy to recognize this in that you have an element plus a compound. So anytime you have element plus compound yields, then you have a single replacement. And the products are a different element and a different compound. And so the skeleton is going to look like this. If you have a cationic single replacement, meaning what is by itself when you start is going to be an element that would lose electrons when it bonds, and it's going to take the place of the cation that is currently in the compound. And then the poor little cation is going to get kicked out. Or you can have an anionic single replacement where you have an element that will gain electrons comes in and kicks out the anion. How do you know what's what? Well, if you have a cationic single replacement, this guy is a metal. And if you have an anionic single replacement, this guy is a nonmetal. Here, I'll write that down for you. Um, a cation in this case would be a metal. And in this case, an anion would be a non. So here I have a picture of a lonely little guy and he wants to dance but these guys are dancing so he comes and cuts in and kicks that guy out. So they just swap dance partners. Examples of single replacement is the ubiquitous zinc and hydrochloric acid that I've been using so much lately. It's one of my favorite reactions. Uh, magnesium lead nitrate's a great one. Kind of there is lead written right here although it's hard to see with the font color choice. Um, then chlorine potassium bromide would be an example of an anionic single replacement. Slightly change the color there to show that these are just a little bit different. Um, and then you have the next kind of reaction that we're going to talk about is a double replacement. And a double replacement is where you have, um, it is a replacement, so you have two elements that are similar switching places just like in the single replacement, but the difference is instead of the reactants being a compound plus an element, we now just have two compounds. So if you see a reaction that starts compound plus compound yields, then you have a double replacement. And the products are also going to be two compounds, but it'll be two different compounds than what you started with. So here's the um, example, or the skeleton here. And on this, you know, you have this compound and this compound, and you'll notice it doesn't matter if you switch the A and the B, or if you switch the X or the Y, because either way, you're going to end up with AY and BX. So it's either you switch the cation or the anion, it doesn't matter, it's completely your preference. And so this is a very, these are some strange pictures and I think that's why I chose them. Uh, but you have a big guy wearing a little hat and a little guy wearing a big hat and they switch hats and there's your double replacement. Brilliant, right? Here are some examples of double replacements. Um, barium chloride and sodium sulfate makes um, sodium chloride, salt, gotta love that, and uh, barium sulfate, which is a precipitate. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, iron sulfide hydrochloric acid, um, you actually, oh yeah, you would see the, the uh, hydrogen sulfide gas bubble off of that. Um, hydrochloric acid, sodium hydroxide, the classic neutralization reaction, and potassium iodide lead nitrate. Uh, this product right here, lead iodide, is a really, really pretty bright yellow color. Toxic, but pretty. 
And then the last reaction type that I want to talk about is combustion. And a combustion reaction is when you have any element or compound react with oxygen. Doesn't matter what it is, most of the time combustion is taught as a carbon containing compound reacting with oxygen, but it doesn't have to contain carbon, it can be anything. Uh, it will always release energy. Sometimes it'll release energy slow. Sometimes it's very fast and you get the explosion fireball that you associate with a typical combustion. And this is how you're going to recognize it. You will have oxygen as a reactant plus something else. The majority of our combustion reactions, I will involve a carbon containing compound just because that is, I mean, when you think of a combustion reaction, you think of combusting something containing carbon. The products, if you are combusting something that contains both carbon and hydrogen, then the products will be water and carbon dioxide. If you're combusting something that does not contain this, well then you can't make these. Um, and so it really just depends on the element that's contained in the reactants. And you just kind of play it by ear. So with practice, you'll get better at the combustions, but you can always recognize a combustion because oxygen is one of the reactants. Um, and so here's an example. This is the combustion of methane. Methane is the gas that we use in our labs for our Bunsen burners. Um, so the combustion of ethane produces carbon dioxide and uh, water. And no, this is not balanced, so don't call me on that one. And you got to love the picture of combustion. Sorry, I went a little corny on you. And here are some examples of combustion. The production of water is actually a combustion reaction, believe it or not. Um, propane, those of y'all that have uh, gas grills at home, this is the combustion of that. Again, these are not balanced. You can balance them on your own if you're really feeling like it. So I'm going to go ahead and call this one a day, and then we can do some practice, I think. I can't remember how many practices I have. Yeah, we'll just do some practice. So call this one a quits.